Hello, this is a brief presentation that discusses what to expect when you receive your joint replacement. This presentation is for anyone that is on a list to receive a hip or knee replacement with NHS Highland, and this may be at Wigmore Hospital or the National Treatment Centre, but regardless of where your operation is done, you'll be on the same pathway and experience the same journey. The presentation will go through your pre-op considerations, your experience in hospital, your discharge planning, and what to expect afterwards. Housekeeping isn't necessary for the recording. However, if you do wish to join us in one of the live sessions, microphones and webcams are not a requirement, so don't worry about having to be visible. So we'll start with your pre-op considerations. It is never too early to prepare for your operation and you can improve your recovery by preparing your home and your physical well-being prior to coming in. It is important to ensure that your home is prepared for your discharge. Your functional level will not decrease after your operation. Anything that you can do now you will be able to do afterwards but having meals in place and your home clutter free will make your recovery and healing process easier. We do ask that before you come in, you have transport arranged with family or friends as elective operations will not take priority with ambulance transport and you should have plenty of notice of your operation date. Your operation is a good opportunity to reduce smoking and alcohol intake. Advice for any assistance with this can be found on the NHS Highland website. It is also never too soon to start your exercises the routine for these exercises can be found in the booklet received the pre-op assessment and there are also classes available with High Life Highland at multiple sites throughout the Highlands. Classes specific to joint replacement are dynamic well-being and escape pain. These can be done at any point in your journey including post-op and information regarding these can be found by contacting your local leisure centre or looking on the High Life Highland website. It is likely you have already met the consultant and anaesthetist at your pre-op assessment. However, if you haven't, there will be plenty of opportunity to speak to them prior to your operation. This will either be at your bedside or in the admission room. This is a good opportunity to for any last minute questions. You also receive a pre-op phone call by myself, Rebecca or from the ward staff if your operation is being done at the National Treatment Centre. This is just a brief call to run through some questions to ensure you're well prepared and informed for your admission. If you experience a missed call in the days running up to your operation, it is likely that this is what it is, so do not worry if we're unable to get a hold of you or you can't return it. So we're going to briefly talk about your experience in hospital and what you can do to take control of your own journey. As a joint replacement patient, you will be participating in the Enhanced Recovery Pathway. What this means for you is that you'll have increased education in the form of this presentation and the information provided at your pre-op assessment. You'll have reduced fasting times and the medication you receive in the ward will be given as part of a routine. You'll be mobilised the same day as your operation, which will reduce any dizziness you experience and reduce your pain. You'll be given diet and fluids at the earliest opportunity and surgical interventions such as IV therapy and catheterisation will only be used when absolutely necessary. All of this ensures that your body returns to normality as soon as possible and reduces any stress it may experience due to the operation. So overall, the benefits of enhanced recovery are decreased length of stay, reduced nausea and reduced pain. You should feel better on the enhanced recovery pathway than the pathway that was used before. However, it is important to let ward staff know if you have any nausea or pain as we can provide medications or exercises that will help with this. As mentioned, length of stay for a joint replacement is relatively short. If suitable, you may go home the same day as your operation, but it is likely that you'll go home the following day. However, you will only be discharged once you are safe in your mobility and your activities of daily living. So do not be disheartened if you're in for a few days longer than this, as this can be perfectly normal.
When coming in, any belongings are brought in at your own risk, so please do not bring in any large amounts of cash or expensive equipment. However, please feel free to bring in your phone and headphones as you can wear this during your operation. We recommend bringing in some loose fitting clothes, nightwear, toiletries and comfortable shoes that have a back. As such, flip flops are not appropriate. Medication can be brought in but generic tablets such as paracetamol and strong painkillers such as oxycodone or morphine should be left at home as the hospital has good supply. As mentioned earlier, the stay is relatively short so a large suitcase of belongings is not required. If you use any mobility aids at present, please bring them in with you. On the morning of your operation, take your tablets as you normally would except those that you've been asked to withhold. This would have been explained at your pre-op assessment or will be discussed at your pre-op call if required. Most medication can be taken as normal and withheld medication tends to be that of blood thinners or those for high blood pressure. Your fasting times will vary depending on the time that you come in for your operation. Those that are coming in first thing are asked not to have any diet after midnight and those that are coming at after 10 are asked to have a light breakfast as long as this finishes before 7am. Regardless of what time you come in for your operation, you are able to drink clear fluids right up until you are sent for theatre. This is part of the Septal Send initiative and is safe to do so as long as you do not exceed a glass of water an hour. When you arrive, you will also have some observations and blood taken and you will be asked some lifestyle questions as part of your admission paperwork. At this point again, the consultant or anaesthetist will see you either at the bedside or the admission room and again this is the best time to ask them if you have any questions. When you talk to the anaesthetist they will discuss the benefits and risks of each form of anaesthesia. Most operations are performed under spinal and this can be given with or without sedation. Although this may mean you are more aware of when you are in theatre, it is likely you will fall asleep but you can bring in headphones and music as you can listen to this during the operation. With a spinal, you will be made to feel numb from below your waist and this will wear off once you're back in the ward. This will allow you to mobilise sooner and will help with your pain and reduce any complications such as nausea. A general will make you fall fast asleep during your operation, but you will require a heavier sedation and a tube in your throat. This may leave you feeling groggy and you may have a sore throat for a few days after your operation. Anesthesia is your own choice, however, all options may not be available to you depending on your medical history. Once you've had your operation, you'll be moved to the recovery room. In recovery, you'll be given a high protein drink, have regular observations and you may have oxygen or IV fluid connected. These will be removed before you return to the ward and this will be when you're comfortable and your observations are stable. Time in recovery can be 15 minutes to an hour. On return to the ward, your observations will continue and you'll have something to eat and drink. Once you have your full sensation back, you'll be mobilised and you'll see the physiotherapy or nursing staff to assist with this. On return, you'll be reviewed by the ward staff and an advanced nurse practitioner. If you're being discharged the same day, you'll have another set of bloods done and a check x-ray. If not, this will be the following day. During this part of your journey, we are very keen to empower you and give you independence. However, it is very important to let ward staff know if you have any nausea or pain. These things are easier to get in control of at earlier opportunities and can be more difficult if staff are not informed to provide management of them. As mentioned earlier, you may see physiotherapy the day of your operation, but it is likely that you will see them the day after. Physiotherapy will ensure that you are safe on your feet and are able to safely do most of your exercises. They will assist with your gait and transfers and ensure that you can safely use your mobility aids. It is very important to work with the physiotherapists. You should not be put off by participating because of pain as mobility is a form of pain relief and this will help return some movement in the joint. It is important to follow the guidance of the physiotherapist after discharge as once you're home, it is your responsibility to take ownership of your rehab and continue with your exercises. There may be some exercises you cannot do straight away, but these will come with time and muscle building.
if you're having a hip replacement, you may see an occupational therapist. Knee replacements may not require their input, but can be reviewed on request. The role of the occupational therapist is to ensure that your home is safe for discharge and you have any equipment you may need. They will also ensure that you can safely do your activities of daily living, such as washing and dressing. Equipment should be in place prior to your admission, so if this is not the case, please contact the OT department. The occupational therapists have let us know that a long-handled chew horn, a grabber and a sockade are not essential, but previous patients have found them helpful to have and have made things easier for them. These can be bought online at Amazon or face-to-face -face at Argos or Boots. Your next stage of your journey will be your discharge planning. As mentioned before, your length of stay will not be long. It is possible for you to go home the same day if notified in advance, but it is likely you will go home between this time and day three after your operation. You will be discharged once you're safe with the physiotherapist and occupational therapy and your medical fit. You will be given medication on discharge and some post-op advice leaflets. As mentioned earlier, transport should be arranged with a family member or friend and you'll be given notice of your planned day of discharge to inform family members in advance to come and collect you. After your operation, Aquacell Surgical will be placed on your wound. You'll take your own wound dressing down seven days after your operation. You'll be given a leaflet that will advise you on how to do this and it has access to a video for you to watch. If you have clips, an appointment will be made at your local ITR for them to be removed and this will be 12 to 14 days after your operation. In the time between your dressing being removed and your clip removal, the clips can be left exposed. If you're uncomfortable with removing your dressing, a family member or a friend can help. The dressing is waterproof so showers can be taken with it on. If you're having your hip replaced, you may require Clexane injections. These are for 10 days after your operation. It is a daily injection that's administered into your stomach. You will receive training on the ward for how to do this. And once you're finished with your 10 day dose or your sharps box that you're discharged with is full, you can hand this in to a GP or a pharmacist and they will dispose of it for you. Your journey will continue long after your discharge and it's important to take control of your journey. Once you're home, no progress is too slow or too quick. You'll know by how your body feels if you've done too much or too little the day before. You may need painkillers for a few weeks or you might not need any after a few days. Everyone is different, but as long as you keep doing your exercises and doing a little more every day, you're doing well. Continue to use your mobility aids as advised. You may feel able to use one of them and eventually none, but this should be taken at your own pace. You'll know you are ready to do so once you're able to mobilise without a limp, fully supporting the weight on both legs. You can drive six weeks after your operation or until you're able to safely do an emergency stop. If you're able to safely do the emergency stop before the six weeks, Please ensure this complies with your insurance as some will not cover you before the six weeks. There is an arthroplasty helpline that runs Monday to Friday during office hours. It is a non-urgent helpline for any queries or concerns you may have. The service is busy, so it is likely you will need to leave a message, but this will be returned at the earliest opportunity. The number can be found on this slide or in your book that given it pre-op assessment or your discharge letter. This helpline can be used for reassurance, but please be aware it is normal to have some swelling after the operation and this may last for a few weeks. This swelling may go away and return and again this is perfectly normal. Ice and elevation can help with this and ice can be used 20 minutes at a time every two hours. Some spotting and minor soakage on the wound is perfectly normal, as is some pain 
and I need to use mobile T-Aids for some weeks after the operation. As said, no progress is too slow as long as you're doing a little more every day. You may notice some bruising after your operation and this is likely to get worse before it gets better. Regardless if you're a hip or knee replacement, this bruising may extend down to your toes and again, although alarming, this is perfectly normal. However, it is important to call if you experience uncontrolled pain that is not helped with the analgesia you were given on discharge. A wound that has significant soakage that extends over 60% of the dressing or has required you to need a new dressing. If you have any signs of infection or if your leg becomes increasingly hot, hard and swollen and this does not relieve with any ice or elevation. Thank you for watching this brief presentation on what to expect with a joint emplacement. Please contact the Arthroplasty Helpline on 07 979 245 if you have any issues after your operation. For any advice or any guidance before your operation or regarding this presentation, please give me an email on rebecca.clark4 at nhs.scot. Thank you.